In this session we're going to look at the, the last part of the ADDI model for training. Now you'll, re you'll remember that the ADDI model consists of various phases. The analysis phase, why is a training program required, um, what's its rationale, what's it attempting to do and so on. The design stage, how it's going to be done, the development, uh, what materials are going to be used, the implementation, how it's going to be delivered. And now we've moved to the last part, the evaluation stage. So let's look at evaluation. It's evaluating the success rate through feedback and in results. It's looking at how effective the training program has been. So that's the the concern here. We're talking about the evaluation phase. The evaluation, evaluation is the last phase of the ADDI model and ensures quality, efficiency and effectiveness of the course design. So evaluation is looking critically at the training program to see if it had good quality, if, if it was done effectively and efficiently, if it was uh, done in an efficient manner. There was no uh, waste of time or waste of resources. And if it was effective, in other words, if it got across the message, if it was uh, effective in changing people's perceptions of an issue or giving, giving them the access to the facilities or acquiring the skills that perhaps in the past they didn't have, it's it's enabling people perhaps. So the evaluation, the evaluation phase is very important. It tells us how effective and how efficient the program has been. Evaluation stresses the importance of planning, reviewing and revision and ensures that training is in line with organizational goals and the purpose for training. So evaluation is keeping us on the tracks it's keeping us uh, focused on what is required. Uh, it's planning the program, planning it, as I said earlier, efficiently and effectively to try and deliver the message and ensure that the message is clearly understood. And it's also a message that needs to be imparted. It's in line with the organizational goals. It's not just a training program for some training program's sake. This is doing a job. It's delivering a skill or a piece of knowledge or a procedure. It's delivering access to that to the attendees. But the reason why they need it is because the organization needs it. The organization needs them to have it. The organization needs it to be competitive. Evaluation is important at each stage of the ADDI model. Uh, evaluation should really take place right from the start. It should be, it should be concerned with the design of the, the program. It should be looking at the materials that are going to be used in the development stage. It should be uh, right throughout the program. There should be evaluation. The, the people involved in the training program should be able to stand back and reflect upon what they're doing and think about and have meetings and discuss it to ensure that the program itself is of good quality and it's focused on the requirements, the requirements of the organization. The best form of evaluation is seen as feedback. Receiving feedback ensures that training is meeting standards set out in the analysis phase. Feedback is most effective because the trainees, the attendees, the people who are coming on the, on the, on the program, on the training program, they have, uh, they have the facility to feed back their uh, understanding of the program, their feelings about the program. They're able to assess whether it was efficient, whether it was a waste of time, the delivery, whether the delivery was good quality or 
whether it was inefficient as well. Uh, they can talk about the timing, perhaps more time could be spent on a certain point and less time spent on a different point, um, and so on. So the feedback is important because the feedback tells the organizers exactly how the program went and enables them to better plan future events. Now in the evaluation phase, well at the end of the course it's necessary to consider whether learners enjoyed the course. If they enjoyed the course, if they found the experience quite pleasant, the chances are they're going to learn more from it. If they found it hard work and boring and uh, a hard job, they, they're not want to, they don't want to reflect upon it, they don't want to think back about that, they don't have fond memories of it, they're not going to reflect properly on it. And they're not going to give accurate feedback, the chances are, if they've had bad experiences. If they've had good experiences, the chances are they'll want to participate, they'll be more cooperative, they'll join in, they will give feedback, and they'll give feedback that's honest, perhaps. They're not going to try and be destructive because they've had a bad experience. Was the learning outcomes, or were the learning outcomes, I should say, were they achieved? And these were set out during the um, analysis phase, but were they achieved? Um, what were the learning outcomes? The program in the documentation should have stated what the learning outcomes were and then were they achieved and how do the organizers know that the learning outcomes were achieved? Were they assessed? Was there some form of assessment so that the attendees were tested before the program and after the program to measure the extent to which the program had influenced their thinking or their perception of an issue or their skill level or whatever it was that was the focus of the program. So were the learning outcomes achieved? That's an important question. Has the training caused a perceived change in the learner's behaviour at work? Um, do the, the learners or the attendees, do they see their jobs differently? Have they got more skills now? Do they have a better understanding of their place in the organisation? Are they more committed or more motivated as a consequence? So it's, it's asking a question, but it, it's not really a question, it's more a, a state of mind. Do the people who attend the programme find themselves in positions to be more committed as a consequence of attending the program? Or have they got better skills? Can they solve problems? It depends on what the program was attempting to do. Was it teaching a skill? Was it uh, showing them the importance of what they're doing? Was it motivational? Uh, what exactly was the purpose of the program? What were the learning outcomes and were they achieved, in other words? And did the organization benefit from the program? Was it good value for money for the organization? The organization had to foot the bill. Were the outcomes uh, sufficient to cover the costs? Does the organization benefit in the long run as a consequence of the training program? And how can that be assessed? Uh, simply having a training program which costs money to set up and to run is not a good idea unless there is some sort of return to the organization. Now there are two types of assessment that could be conducted in the context of the training program. These are known as formative and summative assessments. Very briefly for a start, formative assessment is the assessment that runs right throughout the program. It's, it's meant to uh, ask questions of the attendees but not to assess them, to, to assess perhaps their knowledge to help them to understand more clearly so that 
that form of assessment is not taken into account. It's not. Uh, it's designed, I should say, to to support learning. It's a it's a type of uh, interrogative that is meant to support learning. It is. Um, it's asking questions on the way to ensure that there is understanding and and learning. Now, summative, by contrast, well, summative um, evaluation is important because that's what happens at the end. That measures whether the learning outcomes have been met or not. So that is the these are the hard facts. This is uh, really where everything needs to be serious. The summative evaluation is when uh, the learning outcomes of the program, which are set out in the, the document, which was done at the earlier uh, one of the earlier phases of uh, the design and development, were these learning outcomes achieved? Were they clearly understood? and thus was the program successful. So we have two forms of, a, of evaluation. Formative, which is evaluating understanding as the program moves along, supporting the attendees by asking them questions and uh, that's formative. It's, it's helping to, them to uh, understand more clearly what is what's happening. Summative is actually testing whether the program itself was successful. Now, let's look at um, let's look at formative evaluation. This is evaluation carried out, as I said, uh, during early stages of the design of the training program. It's it runs throughout the design stage. It asks supporting questions, questions which are meant to clarify issues and um, uh, clarify uh, complexities, to, to resolve complexities, to make sure that uh, attendees will not be confused. So it's, uh, it's part of the design of the program to ask formative questions which will uh, help the attendee progress through the, the course. A process of ensuring planning has been adhered to. Obstacles and barriers have been minimized. So it's, it's assessing the, the design of the program to ensure that the program is running smoothly. And really there should be very little confusion. If it's been well designed and well set out and well delivered, there should be very little confusion. So the, the formative feedback should not be significant. These are, as I said, supportive questions done in a manner which is really trying to acquire uh, some insight into learning as the program is being delivered. It can help, they can help to make changes and corrections throughout the training uh, to achieve success. Um, some formative feedback can be useful in modifying the program and modifying the direction of the program. So if it's, uh, if it's an event that's running over, let's say, one day, uh, in the early part of the day, some formative uh, assessment, some questioning of the attendees may take place on the basis of what's about to happen and there may be some feedback suggesting that it would be better to perhaps emphasize some points rather than others and this may influence the rest of the day's work. But it means that the attendees are going to enjoy the program somewhat more and there's a better chance that the learning outcomes will be achieved. Now summative invest, uh, evaluation. Well this is evaluation at the end uh, and it asks simply was the training successful? This is uh, absolutely fundamental to, to ensure that the overall success or failure of the program is discovered. So summative evaluation 
is seen as very important. It looks at the learning objectives to see if they have been met. It is a, a complete analysis with feedback from trainers and trainees. So it should really involve everyone and it tries to work out how effective the whole exercise was. Assessment of learning, well has learning taken place? Was knowledge transferred, transferred from the trainer to the, uh, to the attendee? The trainee attitude and overall training uh, program, the attitude of the trainee should be assessed and what was the attitude of the trainee towards the training program? Um, so summative evaluation is very important in trying to get a picture of how successful the whole event was. It's different from formative. Formative is trying to refine the program. It's trying to support the attendees learning by asking questions to ensure that they're keeping up and understanding what's happening. It's supportive. The summative is trying to assess actually what happened. How successful was the program? Now the conclusions. Well, evaluation is the last phase of the ADI model, although I suggested earlier that it should run right throughout the whole design process from analysis all the way through. Um, there should be some form of assessment running all the way through it, assessment of what's, what's, uh, what's going to take place, um, how it's going to be delivered, um, right through to the formative questions that can be asked to support learning and to get an insight into issues as they arise throughout the course of the event, as well as the summative, the evaluation of the learning objectives at the very end. It, um, the evaluation stage tries to look at the quality and efficiency of training programs. So it's, the purpose is to see if it was good quality and if it was efficient. It should meet the objectives of the organization. The organization had an issue, that's why the training program took place. Now, was that issue resolved? Do the attendees understand the situation better? Have they acquired the skill or the, the knowledge that they didn't have beforehand? The main focus is on the learner and what have the learners learnt? So how are the attendees different at the end of the day versus the start of the day? At the end of the course versus the start of the course? Um, how more productive are they? What is their attitude at the end compared to at the start? What's their skill level at the end compared to the start? The process allows for improvements and changes to be made in future training programs. Well, the, the summative uh, assessment will give feedback which can be integrated into future training programs to refine the future training programs uh, in a way that will make them more efficient, better quality and ensure that the organizational objectives are met and make sure all of the learning outcomes in fact are, are met uh, once they've been agreed upon at the start. So the evaluation stage is very important. Without it there's no way of saying that the the activity was a success or not. So that is the evaluation stage of the ADI model and that's all I'm going to do in this session. So we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.